In this video for Open Buildings Designer Connect Edition HVAC Design Course, we will take a look at the automated duct system sizing and analysis utility in the application. The duct system sizing utility is used to map a system and perform sizing algorithms, resize and rebuild the system, and edit the system to coordinate the layout. The analysis can continue and be repeated throughout the design process to produce completed systems. The utility creates part, fan sizing, and pressure drop outlets and sizes a system using either ASHRAE or SIBC equal friction methods. And it utilizes ASHRAE or SIBC duct fitting databases. Now in order to run the duct sizing analysis, a complete route needs to be available in the current model, the terminal units, grills, diffusers, or plenum boxes in the route must have a value for the airflow rate data group property. So let's take a look at the duct system sizing and analysis utility. This is the model that we've worked on throughout the videos for this course. Now I want to take a look at the terminals and the airflow rate data group property that we included on these terminals when we modeled them. So I'll come to one here and just double click on it. That will basically get me into the edit properties. And if I come to my modify component property panel, I've got docked on the right over here. I see that the airflow rate unit is cubic feet per minute. I'm in an imperial work set here. And the airflow rate is 600. So I see that yes, it, they do have values. Now I can double check myself with the schedules utility. So if I'll come up to data reporting tab, go to schedules utility, choose my diffusers, and if I scroll over here, see my data group properties, and there is the airflow rate. So I see that all of my air terminals have an airflow rate value on them. The duct system sizing tool is in the analysis tab of the ribbon interface. We get our duct system sizing dialog box and we need to load our system into the utility. So the very first button here is load system. Let's take a look at our settings before we do this. So over here we've got our settings and we've got three different tabs here. The design data, it picks up the units from the model that we're in. So notice those are grayed out. I am in an imperial model. Then I can set my de duct design data here. My size criteria, you see we have options for circular duct. Here is the equivalent diameter equation, whether I'm using SIBC or ASHRAE, and then my rectangular duct options here. We have different reporting styles that we can use. I'm using corporate. You can put a corporate logo on there if you browse to a PNG or JPEG, for example. So I'll choose load system, come back out to my model, and select the air handling unit. The first time we select the air handling unit, we need to assign the connections to the ends here. So in my case, end one is fresh air, end two is return air, and end three is the supply air. And then we come down here to say which connection do we want to analyze, and I'll click, I'll pick supply, and then say OK. Now once that system is analyzed and dialog box is populated out here. Notice we get this critical route path. So it's showing me the pressure loss for critical route path, which is good because then I know I've got that system connected. I'll say OK. And then we see our information is populated in here. So we see it, we have our different duct sections. And then it comes down to the air terminals. You can lock various properties in here and continue to calculate using the new sizes that you've uh, locked, either the width and depth, or you've locked the duct pressure loss, for example. So we're going to take a look at locking the width and depth. So I'll come to the 
duct section 1S. Now notice, as I highlight these, it shows me in the model out here, that single line modeling that was done in the earlier video, it's highlighting it in the model back there. But I'll come to the duct size, do a right click on there, and here we can see we can lock the width and depth. Now, in the previous video, we looked at the duct sizer tool, and we took note of a 24 by 12 size. So I'll close that. Notice that there's this blue border now on that cell as a heads up that the width and the depth have been locked in there. So I'll make the same change to section 2 and also to section 3. Then I'll come and run my new calculate. Here's my critical route path. I'll say OK. Now I see that my velocity for those sections is showing me the red background for that field. So that's a heads up. If I hover over this field, I see that it's editable. I can right click to open up the lock panel for the velocity. But I also see there's a warning. Velocity exceeds limiting duct velocity in design data settings. So what I'll do here is I'll come back to my sections and unlock the depth. Notice how that field changes, that cell changes up here, showing me that only the width is locked right now. So I'll do that for all three of these. And again, I'll calculate critical route path. I'll say OK. So now I see that my velocity is good. Now I've got that red indicator in the duct size, and again, I can take a look at what it's letting me know. The depth is out of range. Now I'll go ahead and select on this field, and I'll get a list of possible sizes, again, according to my settings out there. So I'll choose, for example, here, Choose the 34 by 32. And let's say I choose the same for duct section 2. And then duct section 3, I'll choose, let's say, 34 by 30 for that one. And then I'll come to duct section 4. And here I'll choose uh, 37 by 36. And I'll lock that width and depth. I'll run my calculate. So now I see that I don't have any of those red indicators for those duct sections, whether it's for the duct size or the velocity. Now the next thing I'll do is lock the values of duct sizes for the rectangular and round duct sizes to minimize the number of transition pieces before I promote it, the single line to 3D. Now, in the duct section summary, we have this group by option. So we can look at it either by duct section or by duct element. So you see how that changes what it pr presents to me here. So I'll come down to the, the duct sections 2, 3, and 4, and I'll lock both the width and the depth. Now I've already got it for 4, so I'll do it to 2 and 3 there. But I'll set these to be 33 by 28. And then I'll come down to where I have round ductwork. You can see here. So for elements 5, 6, and 7, I'll make that 30. For 8, 9, 10, and 11, I'll make it 28. For 12, 13, 14, and 15, I'll make it 24. And 
finally for 16 and 17, I will make it 18. We'll run a calculate. I'll do some adjustment here to uh, fix where I've got these warnings. So let's say here I come and unlock the depth. I'll calculate it. I'll increase the size of the ones we set here. You know, right here I can say, go ahead and unlock these diameters, calculate it, and I'll change these all to be 34. Again, just to minimize the amount of transitions that we'll, we'll see. 34. So notice I just keep doing some adjusting, running some calculates here. Increase the size some. And I'll come down here. Say we make this continuing on with our 24 inch diameter. And now I see I've uh, no longer have those errors. But you know, up here, I've got two 34s. I'll make this a 32. And then I'll go ahead and lock these. And then we'll lock this one. And I'll go ahead and increase the size of these. And I'll lock this one. And we'll make this one be 22 also. Maybe one more 22 inch one. On our calculate. So I'm starting to get what I like, the good results there with none of the warning indicators. Once I've got my summary without any of those warnings, for example, I can rebuild the system in the model. So you have two options up here in the rebuild options. We have write to model and promote to 3D. So when we go write to model, it will take these results and write it onto the single line model that we have in our model. And if I exit out of the utility is saying are you sure you want to close it data will not be re retained after reopening I'll go ahead, ahead and say yes here because I know I've already written to the model so if we just come back to it load the system again make sure this is on supply air and we see those results if we take a look at it by duct element. I see those same locks that I put and that now those sizes have been written to the single line model out there. So it's stored in the model. In the next video, we'll take a look at promoting the single line model to a 3D model. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.